everybody, Erica Sirwin here from Pink Bucker Designs. Happy September. Today is September 1st, the day I'm recording this video, and Stampin' Up! has a wonderful new promotion called Perfect Partners, and they have brought in some dies that match stamp sets that don't already have dies. My favorite on the list is the Apple Harvest um, stamp set with the coordinating dies. Now, you can buy these separately. If you've already bought the stamp set, you can buy the dies, or you can buy them together and save 10%, which we always like to do, right? So I have used these. This is the focus on my blog this week. I've got about five projects to show you, so make sure you click the link here on YouTube to go back to my blog if you're looking for more ideas. Um, for this card, we're gonna use watercolor pencils um, and masking for the background. All right, well, let's get started. I am going to stamp my image if I can get my paper over here first on watercolor paper. And I'm going to use stays on. The reason I'm using stays on is because we're using water, watercolor pencils, um, a water painter, and the stays on won't run like um, a water based ink would run. All right, so I'm going to ink up my image and stamp it on watercolor paper. You can also use our shimmer white paper. That works just as well. All right, so we've got um, three colors. I'm gonna use three colors. We have a ton of watercolor pencils. I actually have them all in a case like this. Um, I have duplicates of colors, so this is more than what we actually offer. We have two sets, so make sure you check them out. Both have great colors, different colors in each set. I am using uh, Real Red for my apples, Old Olive for the leaves, and Early Espresso for the stem. Now with my watercolor pencil, I'm just gonna start by coloring it in. Um, you wanna make sure that you've got a nice sharp pencil, of course, that's gonna help you kind of stay in those lines where you want them. And after I do this, I'm gonna come back with my water painter and add some water and that's gonna smooth that out and give it a watercolored look. Now, of course, you can color your apples, red, green, or yellow, depending on what color you wanna do. We've probably got a colored pencil for that. All right, now I'm gonna use a bowl of water just to um, control my water really well. I don't want a lot of water. So as you can see, hopefully, it just starts to blend that pencil color in and makes it nice and smooth. This is a good um, technique if you, like me, I can admit to this, feel like sometimes when you use regular ink for water coloring, you make a mess, you get kind of out of control and colors going everywhere. This is a great alternative to that. Helps you really kind of keep everything in where it needs to be and uh, just gives you a lot more control over the, the, the color and the, the water by just uh, dipping it in like this. You can also use our blender pens, not our stamp and blend markers, but we have something called a blender pen that looks like a marker that has a solvent in it that will react the same way as the water is right here. All right, so now what you can do is take your um, pencil and go in and add more color. Now you can do this while it's wet or you can wait until it's dry. It's up to you. I'm gonna add a little bit of color there. I'm gonna add color on either side. We'll add some underneath that leaf where there would be a shadow and maybe down this side right here. Okay, so again, I'm gonna take a little bit of water, blend all that nicely. And now we look like we are a watercolor artist. All right, now just like you would do when you are uh, using ink, you wanna clean off your brush. I'm gonna switch over to Old Olive. And we've got quite a few leaves here, so I'm gonna kind of try to go fast. I probably will get out of the lines. 
but hopefully not too, too bad. The die will cut off. Oh, look, I forgot an apple. It was hiding in there. I completely missed that apple, didn't I? All right, well, I'll come back at the end and fix that. I got a little bit of green on there, but I think we can, I think we can fix that. All right, so I'm kind of putting the color um, on the center of the leaf, leaving kind of the edges lighter. Um, the leaves would probably be lighter out on the edges where the light is shining on them. Did I miss any? Maybe that's one right there and that one right there. Nope, there's one back here too. All right. Now these are smaller than the apples, so you want to make sure you're not using too much water but the water will move that color. So if you feel like it's not moving much, then you need more water. All right now here, let's see, I got green on that apple. One thing you can do is we're gonna put a lot of water right there and then I'm gonna take my paper towel and dab it. Look at that, that worked well, didn't it? So now when I come back to add that red in there, it won't be a problem. All right, I got a little bit too much water there. Use your paper towel if you do get too much water. You can dab that off. It's easier to add color than it is to remove color. Keep that in mind. Um, you wanna start out easy, you know, light, not making it too dark or too heavy. You can always go back and add in that color. All right, now right here I'm gonna be real careful because I don't want that color to bleed over into the apple. All right, now I'm gonna come back over here to my boo-boo and add some more green to those leaves. Like that, there we go, perfect. All right, we've got these back here, and the ones down here underneath would be a little bit darker, probably, because they're in the shadows. But we are gonna be adding something on top of our little cluster here, so I'm not gonna worry too much about adding in all that um, shadows and stuff. But, you know, that's, that's also the fun part. If you wanna do that, you certainly can. It looks like that apple, he just wants to be green, doesn't he? All right, let's do red. And then we'll come back when it's dry and add in some green on those leaves if we feel like they need it. I'm gonna make this one really dark. I'm gonna be heavy on the color because it's be, it's covered up by the leaves. So it would be darker behind there because it has a shadow. Now our water painters come in three um, you get a pack of three. One is this fine tip, which is what I'm using. And one is um, a little bit fatter, and then one is a wide brush. All right, now let's come in with our early espresso. Um, I really like using the pencils when I'm coloring something that is as, you know, narrow and small as this. It, it, is hard to get in here if you're just using ink and a water painter. This way we are, we've got this fine tip on our pencil and it's really easy to, to put the color where we want it. Now, truthfully, we don't really need to add much here to the branch, but I'm just gonna use my the very tip of my water painter to just kind of run all that together, smooth it all out so you don't see any pencil marks. And we still are having a problem over here, aren't we? All right, I need to let it dry is what I need to do. And then we'll come back. I'm not very patient. If you know me, you know that is for sure not very patient at all. All right, so let's add in some more color here, but I'm not gonna add any water. It's pretty wet, so the color already is just kind of blending together. There we go. All right, let's look at our card. 
Now that leaf right there is that leaf. And you know what it actually looks like? I used a different color, didn't I? I probably used something else in here. I'm not sure. But we're going to use old olive and, and just stick with it. Um, maybe, I don't think we have a granny apple green, but we had a lemon lime twist a long time ago. Maybe that's what I used. That came in a paper pumpkin kit. Okay, so now we're going to do something else also. We're going to take our green. Where did it go? Roll down here. And we're going to add some color up here for some extra leaves. Now I'm also hoping to cut my sentiment out of here. I may not have left enough room. Let's see. Well, no, probably not. I probably need to get another piece. So I'm just going to do this and then we'll get our water painter and blend those colors. We're just going to add in some extra leaves behind there. So you can move the more the more water you get on there the more you're going to be able to move that color around now be careful you don't want it to run over into your apples and one thing you can do is just kind of blot some of it to add a little bit more watercolor texture like that so as it dries now you can see it's going to be a variety of color okay now let's move that out of the way and we're going to let that dry and let's work on our card base. I've got a piece of craft card stock here. Um, this is our craft specialty paper. And let's move the water. <laughs> let's do that. Um, I am going to take just a little bit of um, my adhesive, just a tiny bit, to hold it down like this. I'm going to use the grid on my grid paper to make sure that it's straight. All right, now here is my mask. I think this is kind of like a quarter foil. Maybe, am I saying that right? And we'll tape that down with some post-it tape like that. Now I'm, I've used masks in the past on videos and I like to cover the whole surface, right? Well, this time we're just gonna do kind of a subtle, just kind of right in the middle, okay? So I'm gonna grab my soft suede. Now soft suede is a dark color so we're going to want to be careful and not go real heavy. So I'm going to start off over here and then just kind of work out from the center. All right. Now, my tendency is to keep going, adding more and more and more. But we're going for just kind of a subtle. And I may have actually made it heavier than it needed to be. But we're going to stop because we don't want it real dark and bold. Now I'm going to take my dark soft suede stamp and blend and I'm going to flick some ink. Actually, I'm going to use my light. My dark is has seen better days. <laughs> All right. So there we go. Add in, add in just a little bit of splatter. All right. Now we're going to cut this down to the size of our card base. Um, the card front is Let's see if I can grab my paper trimmer. The card front is four and a fourth by five, and I don't want to leave a border, so I'm going to make it the size of my card front. So I'm just going to kind of start over here, putting a little bit off, and then we'll come over here, four and a fourth. I'm going to cut off a little bit from the bottom. Let's see how much... Yeah, maybe we'll do it like that. All right, so four and a fourth by five and a half. Let's see if we got it right. If I can get my card base. I've got things already piled up. And we're gonna put that, yep, looks good on there. Now, you know what? I think grab a darker Stampin' Blend and add a little bit more color to this because I feel like that soft suede just kind of blended in. This is, um. Number 100, our dark natural tone stab and blends. Let's see. Oh, yes, there we go. I wanted just a little more, a little more um, distinction. Very, uh, the colors, I wanted them to vary a little bit. All right, now get your stamp and seal. Boy, my stamp and seal has seen better days. It's a mess. <laughs> 
But who wants to stop crafting to clean something? Not I. I'm not going to take time to do that. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, no, no, no. Let's get that set, set on there. The one thing you have to be careful about when you're doing this is to set it down. Do not, don't push it down until you know you've got it straight, which is what I just did. There we go. Okay. So there's our card base. I have cut out a um, frame from So Saffron. And um, this frame, I love this frame because it's easy to cut. And uh, you don't have to set dies together, nest dies together to get your frame. You know, sometimes when you do that, it's off centered, one side's thicker, one side's thinner, but not with these. It's just a, a die frame. Let's see, did I bring it over here with me? I did not. And uh, it cuts it perfect every time. Um, by the way, the supply list for this card and two other projects are on my blog. Um, it's a free PDF and you can save it, print it, download it, whatever you want to do, keep it as a reference. And it'll have all the supplies listed as well as um, the measurements for the card. All right, I think we're ready to do some die cutting. So let's bring over our cut and emboss machine. And we're gonna grab our new die. Now, you know, another thing that, <laughs> if you know me, I would probably try to fussy cut this. And it this is not an easy fussy cut. And that makes it, sometimes people get a little frustrated with me and my designs because they don't want to fussy cut. But look, now we have these new dies and look how many there are. There are a ton of them. So I'm gonna cut out some leaves. I mean, we've got like 10 leaf dies or something crazy. There's a lot of them. So cut out however many you want. I used some post-it tape to hold that die on there because my paper is warped now that it's wet. And uh, that, you know, is gonna be a little bit tricky to keep that die in place. All right, so we've got all those pieces. Look at them, aren't they beautiful? All right, get all of those off. I love how everything sticks to the plate. Um, I have new plates, which seem to just make things look so nice. All right, now let's take our little, um, our little apple cluster. Isn't that cute? Very fallish. Um, now another thing that we're gonna do, and I don't know if we have enough paper here, so I'm gonna grab another half sheet of watercolor paper, and let's slide this over and stamp our sentiment, so we don't have to bring this back over in a minute. Um, our sentiment, our, our uh, stamp set comes with several sentiments. We're going to use the one that says, hope you are feeling better. That's a nice card to have on hand for sure. Hope you're feeling better. I don't like the way that stamped. Let's try it again. Okay, there we go. Now I am again, there I'm going to use, I saw it over here, this die. This is part of these apple harvest dies. And I'm going to center that right there. And I think I'm going to use that post-it tape again because I'm afraid it might twist. Now we're also going to cut out two of these flowers, okay? Two of the smaller flowers from watercolor paper. The reason I stamped my sentiment on watercolor paper is because I want it to match everything. It'll be the exact same color as everything else. All right, so there we have that. Now while we have these sitting in here. Let's add a little bit of color to them. All right, I'm gonna take my So Saffron ink pad and some water, and I'm just gonna dab some yellow, kind of, ooh, that's too much, we need more water. We'll spread it out and make it nice and light. The more water you add, the more diluted the color will be all right a little bit darker there in the middle like that all right now we're gonna let those dry for the sake of the video I'm probably gonna have to sneak off and dry them but let's put the rest of our card together and we'll come back to that okay now we are ready now this card is fancy I think this card is probably for someone special a lot of techniques in this card we're gonna take this new silver threaded 
twine and we're going to cut it and we're going to pull out some of these threads from in here. Um, if you watch the next two videos, you'll see I'm going to use threads from this um, for all of today's projects. It goes a really long way. There is a silver thread in there, but we've got these really kind of earthy looking textures where if you just loosen up that end, then you've got these, okay? Now I'm gonna take them and just kind of loosely wrap them around in kind of a, a little nest, all right? Let me bring over my card so you can see what we're doing. We're gonna add this back here to the back, okay? And you can manipulate it and get it to do what you want. And then get some dimensionals. And I actually have a circle that was cut out of a dimensional um, foam adhesive sheet. And I'm gonna use it to hold that down like that. And then we can use that to adhere to our card. All right, so you can kind of assess, you know, how do you want, and it, you know, I think I want it more up. So let's see if we can, oh yeah, like that. All right, so I'm gonna set that down, but first we're gonna do a vellum circle. All right, so we've got this vellum circle. Let's put it on our vellum circle with that dimensional, right like that. Ooh, that's kind of crazy and I kind of like it but let's trim it a little bit shorter. All right, now you can use your regular dimensionals behind here and the apple is gonna hide it, hide the dimensionals. All right, we're gonna put that right there. Now let's bring in those leaves. Remember those leaves that we cut? We're gonna add these in just kind of all over the place to give us some more dimension. If you wanted to leave something off, this is probably where you could leave something off, some steps. But I like to, I like to do lots of layers. And these little watercolor leaves are beautiful. All right, so I'm just gonna go around, poke these guys in like that. And like that. All right, now let's grab, <laughs> I don't know why my fingers aren't working today. Grab this and let's see, can we use a regular dimensional on this? I think we can. We'll put them right in the center, you'll see why. Because over here it's too low. So get this and just put it right across like that. And look, I'm gonna try to cover up that kind of that blurred Remember where we kind of, our ink kind of spread together? All right, now, last but not least, remember these guys? They're not quite dry, but that's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add, whoops. I'm gonna add one right here. Let's make sure we're not covering up our words. And we'll put one right here. And last but not least, We've got some of these gorgeous um, iridescent basic jewels. If you haven't given these watercolor pencils a try, I highly recommend it. I think if you ever feel frustrated with watercoloring, this is a great option for you. All right, and there we go. Now let's compare because I definitely used a different color uh, watercolor pencil, didn't I? Wow, this one has a much muted, I don't know. This one is much more muted, but more fallish. All right, you guys, hop back to my blog, get that free PDF and check out the other two projects. Thanks so much. I hope you'll give this a try. Bye.